Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today, we are making falernum. Uh, if you don't know what falernum is, it is a common ingredient in tiki drinks, tropical drinks, and it's a spiced liqueur or syrup. You can have it alcoholic or non-alcoholic. We are gonna be doing it alcoholic. You can buy falernum at the store, on the shelves. If you are familiar with tropical drinks, then you are probably aware of the John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum. This is the industry standard. It's been around for as long as tiki drinks have been around. So why are we making our own Falernum if we can go ahead and buy this quality product on the shelves? Well, it's just like anything else. It tastes better when you make it yourself. It's fresh, it's a learning experience, it's fun. You have control over the flavors you want in your liqueur. So I am going to do that. I'm going to show you the recipe that I like. We are going to compare it to the Velvet Falernum, talk about the differences, and then we are going to mix it up into a classic corn and oil cocktail. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make some Falernum to the bar. Today's video is sponsored by Visky. Visky makes quality barware, glassware, tools, everything you need to level up your home bar. I have been using Visky products for a long time, even going back before this cocktail channel. They do consult with professional bartenders, so they are built with purpose and functionality. Some of you might be wondering what some of this stuff is. Let me show you. This is an ice mold, and this is a cocktail smoker. We use that in the uh, smoked cocktails video. I always like to bust out the, the mallet. Got a cobbler shaker here. This one is really solidly built, and I like the gunmetal. I like the gunmetal look, yeah looks tough. But today I am here to talk about the Bow Lowball Tumbler. B-E-A-U. You ain't got no alibi, you beautiful. You beautiful. Bow means beautiful in French. They are beautiful. It's got a sturdy bottom. It feels good in your hand. I think we all like a good sturdy bottom. And they are 100% lead free, dishwasher safe. What I really like about these is they are stackable. They're stacking right now. I can keep going and you can be the judge of what you want because if you click on the link down below and use the code Anders15, you'll receive 15% off the entire site, site-wide. Get yourself something nice. Your bar deserves it. You deserve it. Keep being you. Thank you, Visky. <sighs> Onto the film. Falernum dates back to the 1700s. It was created in Barbados a long time ago, and originally it was rum that was infused with sugar, limes, uh, spices. It was something that everybody made a little bit differently and over the years other ingredients became common to add into falernum like almonds, ginger, you name it. There, there are a number of different kinds of falernum. My recipe is a little different than a lot of other recipes that I'm finding online. It takes 24 hours to make but we are going to not take that long on camera. We are going to speed things up and you will have a recipe here by the end of the video. So let's grab our ingredients. Okay, shall we? Let's start with the limes. We're gonna need six limes, nice, fresh, you don't want any spots on the skins, 50 grams or roughly four tablespoons of toasted almonds. I bought these pre-toasted, unsalted, but you can toast them yourself. Then we're gonna need our spices. We will need 12 cloves, nutmeg. We are going to grate half a teaspoon of nutmeg, 15 grams of ginger. You don't need to peel it, but if you want to peel it, feel free. And then we are going to use half of this vanilla bean. Be sure to arrange it on the plate so it looks like a face with hair. We're also going to need eight ounces of semi-rich simple syrup. This is one and a half parts sugar to one part water. And then for the infusion, we will want overproof rum. I'm using Eldorado 151, but it's really common to use Ray and Nephew, which is a big full flavored rum. Actually, they're both good. I've made it both ways, both good. Today, I decided to go with the 151. That's it, that's all we need. Now we can start the infusion. So get this off to the side. There we are, we've got a jar that is sealable. This is where the infusion will take place. First, let's start with the almonds. We are going to chop up these almonds. This will give us more surface area for the infusion. Got almond dust everywhere. See how that looks, right? Yeah. A divine aroma of toasted almonds. Now, if we can get all of these in the jar, that would be good. There we are. This is not the most refined operation. I would recommend a larger cutting board. I'm learning that this small one is nice for cutting up a lime, but not for chopping up almonds. You know what? We're gonna make a mess. We're just accepting that. Now this next phase is going to take a little while. We are going to zest all of these limes. And the idea is we want the oils and not the white pith. 
So we are going to work our way around each lime to get all of the green off of the lime. My technique is I start with uh, the end, carefully work my way around, and then check in every so often, make sure you're getting all of the, the skin. We are going to end up with six bald limes. This is gonna take a little while, but that's okay. This is what doing it yourself is all about. You have to earn it. Usually I like to wear rubber gloves for this, but I didn't bring them today. You could use a peeler and get long strips, but then you do have to go in and make sure you don't have any of that white pith on there. These are the times I wish I had a bar back. At the end, you are gonna have this bald lime. The juice in there is still good, so hang on to it. Juice it for your cocktails. A lot of people will add the lime juice into the infusion, well, after the infusion when they add the sugar. <sighs> So when that's complete, we can gather up our lime zest dust and put that on top of the almonds. Clean as we go or not, just push it around. That's what I'm doing. Dump in the cloves. If you want, you could toast these as well. Dump in all 12. Okay, now we are going to dice up that ginger and drop that in too. All right, now take half of our vanilla bean for me, it's about a three inch piece of vanilla bean. Cut down the center, split it open, and we are gonna remove all of the vanilla seeds that are inside the pod. It's kind of like, it looks like a paste, but they're actually really tiny seeds. You can drop those in, and then I'm gonna put the pod in there as well. Excellent. Last thing to do, the nutmeg. Great, half a teaspoon. I'm just gonna do that right over my measuring spoon and right in. Now, we can add the rum. Right on top, going to do four ounces of our overproof rum. Oops. If you drip, then just wipe it up and add in a little bit more. We can cap it, give it a shake. I like to then open it up and with a spatula, push down anything that's stuck on the side. Everything submerged if possible. Cap it up and now we wait 24 hours. If you think about it every couple hours, give it a shake, just agitate it, help it along. But otherwise, all you have to do is wait. Put this in a cool, dark place and it'll be ready the next day. Thankfully, I have another. Because of movie magic, this is what it will look like 24 hours later. Okay, so here we have today's infusion and here is yesterday's. You lose a lot of that bright green, but all of that flavor is in the rum. I'm gonna clear up here, make some space, and then we are gonna filter this off and complete the Falerno. And we're back. I've got a coffee filter here that I'm going to filter off the infusion with. I can smell it from here. No need to really stick your nose in it. And then dump it right into the filter. Get all the bits. So we're gonna let that drain. Kinda looks like chartreuse. Does not taste like it though. There's a fair amount of waiting when it comes to making Falerno. I'm just going to push everything down here. And then when it looks like it's about finished, I like to really help it along because there's a lot more liquid in there by just giving it a squeeze. Careful though, those almonds might break the filter. There we go. All right, clean up any mess you have made. And now we can add the sugar. I'm gonna pour this into a jar so that I can shake it up with the simple syrup. Eight ounces, semi-rich, simple syrup. One and a half parts sugar to one part water. Right on top. Put a cap on that, give it a little shake, combine everything. And there we have a salad dressing. This is our final Falernum. Now, what I like to do is I have a repurposed bottle. Extra points if you can guess what this bottle's from. The cap says product of France. I don't have a funnel. All right, this is a 375 milliliter bottle. Put a cap on it. Feel free to label it. That, my friends, is homemade Falernum. Cheers. Now we can compare it with the Velvet Falernum. Obviously, they look very different. Clearly, mine is very green and the Velvet is clear because it's filtered. On the nose, the Velvet Falernum has kind of like a lime, but a creaminess to it. Mine, I definitely get toasted almond and lime. Let's go in for a taste. Mm. I do like that Velvet Falernum. Really is tasty. I do like using the Velvet Falernum in my cocktails. I don't always have the homemade stuff. It's good. There's a brightness to it. I don't know exactly what's in it, but it does taste almost as if there is citric acid in it. And I do get uh, a liminess, although it's not like a bright lime. Now the homemade stuff. Bigger flavor. I get the lime and it's definitely lime that I'm tasting. It does have a bit more nutty flavors. I get the, the almond quite a bit. There is a creaminess that is, is kind of that vanilla. Comparable, but the cocktails that they would make would be 
quite different. Mine is sweeter, mine is hotter, it's got more alcohol, it has more sugar, I'm guessing. So now the real question is how does this stuff work in a drink? For that, I thought it'd be fun to make a corn and oil. Corn and oil is what's listed on the back of the Velvet Falernum bottle. And it's uh, just a dark rum. They say blackstrap rum, although personally, I kind of think that blackstrap is kind of just a marketing thing. I would say a good aged rum and Falernum. That's really all you need in a classic corn and oil. Although a lot of people will add bitters. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of bitters because this is rather sweet. So enough chit chat. Let's make the cocktail. I'm going to use my homemade falernum in a corn and oil. Let me get set up. We need rum. That's what we need. All right, I've got the real McCoy 12 year. This uh, rum from Barbados because this is a cocktail from Barbados. And I really like this rum. So we're gonna start with the rum. Two ounces of a dark aged rum to that. Quarter ounce of our homemade falernum and two dashes of Angostura bitters. Four for me because I have a little dasher bottle. Stir it with ice. This is just to chill and dilute, combine everything, about 30 seconds or so. Grab a chilled lowball, throw in some ice cubes. It's pretty common to serve this one on crushed ice too, and that's good, but you are gonna get more dilution. And strain the cocktail into the glass. And for a garnish, I'm going to do one lime wedge. That's it, easy peasy. Cheers. Oz, would you like to join me? Okay. There we are. Here I am, cheers. Hmm is in the vein of an old fashioned, I'd say. Yes, it, yeah. uh, it is old fashioned esque. Yeah, there is bold spice. Uh, I can taste some ginger and I can taste the rum. So I do think that this one, you wanna use a rum that you would sip on neat. Go ahead with the uh, Go ahead with it. The lime. Yeah, I'm yeah. into it. All right, there we are. I really loaded up the ice cubes here. That's all right. I like I, the zing. It's good. It is good. I like it. So there we are. Oz, would you be so kind as to say the farewells? Oh, okay. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Thank you to Visky for sponsoring today's video. Sign up for the newsletter, get your merch. What else? Make some Falernum. Make Let some Falernum. Let us know how it goes. Yes, goodbye. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life.